Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror film, rule number 1, there are no ghosts. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with rookie police sergeant, Lee, on night duty at a building's parking lot. While checking the grounds, Lee stops a car and gives the driver, Chan, a ticket for over-speeding and not wearing a seatbelt. Chan explains that he's in a rush because he's late for his son's birthday, since his boss made him work even though it's Sunday. After reluctantly receiving the ticket, Chan drives away, but he's not even that far when Lee tops the hood of his car. Chan goes out, and Lee points out the broken tail lights. Chan informs Lee that he will get the lights repaired tomorrow, since he's in a rush. However, Lee insists on fixing them, because it is dangerous to drive without them, especially at night. So Lee asks him to get a screwdriver, and the driver has no choice but to oblige. While Chan returns inside to get the screwdriver, Lee knocks on the lights to test if they'll blink. However, he feels something on his knuckles, and as he looks at what it is, he finds blood. Lee looks at the trunk and sees blood coming from inside. He remains calm and distracts Chan by talking to him, while silently opening the trunk. Lee gasps while his eyes widen, as he finds a bloody corpse of a teenage schoolgirl. His shock gets interrupted when Chan rebukes him for being too strict as an officer. Lee pulls out his gun, but before he can pull the trigger, Chan shoots him, with the bullet hitting his shoulder. Lee drops to the cold floor along with his gun, and Chan uses this opportunity to apprehend him. While castigating Lee's uptight behavior toward him, Chan shoots his limbs and even taunts him. He laughs maniacally as he takes out Lee's wallet, reads his ID, and looks at Lee's wife's picture. Just as Chan continues taunting him, the car trunk suddenly opens by itself, and the two of them witness the corpse of the school will move. Although shocked, Lee uses this diversion, grabs his gun beside him, and kills Chan. After shooting him in the head, Lee looks back at the schoolgirl, but she has vanished and the trunk is closed again. Before he can question things, Lee loses consciousness. 49 days later, Lee wakes up in a hospital with head and body injuries. After his recovery, Lee returns to work, only to receive a piece of bad news. It turns out, Chan is a serial killer they have been searched for the past three years. Of course, his superiors are happy that Chan was caught and shot by Lee for self-defense. However, they are unhappy with the involvement of the schoolgirl's ghost in his statement. As he refuses to change his statement, his superior transfers him to handle light duties at the Miscellaneous Affairs Department, or MAD for short. After that, Lee goes home, but his wife's not there yet, so he instead cleans up their house. After a while, Lee's wife comes home with a colleague, who leaves after helping her carry tons of test papers. The wife hugs her husband tightly, not caring about her colleague. The following day, Lee arrives at the MAD headquarters, an empty warehouse. He meets a bespectacled co-worker, who refuses to talk to him, and focuses on working on his puzzle. Lee asks for the boss's whereabouts, but the colleague ignores him. Lee dismisses his behavior, and patiently waits for something to happen at his new workplace. After a while of waiting, their department receives a call, reporting about an unusual case. The colleague gives him the address, and Lee checks it right away. It's an establishment for swimming classes, where Lee immediately experiences unexplainable things, like finding a pair of slippers even though the grounds are empty. The guard finds him and is spooked a little bit, when Lee explains that he entered because the door was left unlocked, although he locked it. The guard dismisses it, and shares with Lee that they have been hearing the wheezing sound for over a week. The guard himself is not a very superstitious person, but a month before that, he witnessed an eight-year girl drowning in the swimming pool. Right then, as Lee also hears the wheezing sound, he goes to check out the back, especially the pipes. There he unexpectedly meets his eccentric and beer-guzzling superior, Inspector Wund. Wund lets him get back to work, and even helps him by pointing out the water pump. Lee checks it out, and discovers the cause of the wheezing sound, scaring people every night for the past week. It's from a clump of hair. Wung explains that women drop a lot of hair every day, which clots the water pump. Hence comes the wheezing sound. After solving the case, Wung explains what MAD specializes in, and what they do as workers in the said department. Unlike his work before, MAD deals with unusual cases, but Wung reminds him to remember the very first rule. There are no ghosts in this world. After his first case, Lee goes home, while Wung stays at the MAD headquarters. Wung sleeps on the couch, listening to ballroom music after drinking beer bottles. His sleep gets interrupted, when the delivery teenager arrives. The girl delivers his cigarettes, wine, and food, and even gifts him an inflatable dinosaur balloon. The girl leaves after her deliveries, but she bikes around the headquarters front for a while. At that same time, Wung inflates the balloon and uses it as his dance partner. The following day, a teenage girl is on the rooftop of a building, where there's construction. The adolescent girl wraps her neck in red rope, before hanging her feet from the ground. She claps and repeatedly laughs, saying it's fun, as she does so. And her life is gone within a minute. Later that day, the MAD headquarters receive another call, and Lee checks it out with his drunken boss. 
It's a hospital where the nurse informs them about the strange thing happening in bed 4. There was an 80-year-old woman who died three days ago from throat cancer. Before she died in bed 4, she loved watching the TV. And after death came to her, the television began switching on and off by itself. Because of the unexplainable occurrence on the floor, all the nurses thought of transferring all the patients to the second floor. While the nurse takes one to the meter room, Lee stays there and gets a quick apparition of the old woman who died. He also witnesses the television turn on itself, frightening the nurse after returning. One calms down the nurse and points out to the window. A man in an apartment presses a remote to watch. So Wong explains that both televisions are the same. Whenever the man presses his remote, the TV in the hospital also turns on. However, Lee is not convinced by this. So after solving the case, Lee confronts Wong about lying to the nurse, because it turns out that the television is unplugged. Caught in the act, Wong confesses that MAD rule number one was implied, because they need to conceal supernatural incidents from the community, so as to reduce social panic. As expected, Lee does not accept this, but Wong insists it's the reality. After the duties, Lee returns to the haunted swimming pool, where he hears the wheezing sound again. He goes to the water pump at the back, to take out the clump of hair again. But instead, he encounters the ghost of the drowned girl. Lee runs away in fear, but the girl shows up again in the shower room. Her hair blocks her face, and Lee can only stare at her, as she cries to him that she just wants her mother and be at home. After that encounter, Lee returns home like nothing has happened. He finds his wife asleep on the couch, while the dining table is full of food plates. She wakes up after Lee sits down and lies beside her. She hugs him from behind, and tells him that they are not alone in their house. Lee immediately stands up and pulls out his gun, thinking they have been invaded. But his wife quickly explains that they are no longer alone, because she's pregnant. Lee calms down and hugs his wife, who shares that she just discovered her pregnancy yesterday. The following day, Lee asks his superior if he can alter his statement and be removed from MAD. However, his superior informs him that he cannot be retransferred, because Wong has been waiting for a long time for someone to replace his position in the department. Just then, Wong comes in carrying food and a resignation letter, which he gives to the superior. Later that day, Lee and Wong check out a theater, after a supernatural complaint has been reported to their department. The owner refuses to cooperate, since he distrusts anyone who comes in, thinking they are all crooks and thieves. As the owner argues with Wong, the property agent converses with Lee, she informs him that she was the one who made the call. Her client bought the theater, but they saw some strange things when the contractors came to renovate it. The agent then asks Lee who Wong is talking to, and as he checks the mirrors, he only finds Wong's reflection, meaning that the owner is a ghost. The angry owner charges at Lee, so Wong runs after him. However, the ghost owner disrupts the ongoing construction before possessing the agent. Wong is fortunately unharmed, even though the plywoods drop on him, but he cannot make heavy movements. Wong repeatedly instructs Lee to kill the woman, but Lee cannot pull the trigger. He just crawls back, so Wong shoots the agent's limbs, and then puts the bullet in her head, before she can touch Lee to pass the possession. Wong finally frees himself, so he takes Lee's gun, while Lee breathes heavily from astonishment. They return to the headquarters, where Wong explains to Lee that they need to hide the truth about ghosts' existence from society, because it will create panic and chaos if it's revealed. If these ghosts touch a person, the person will be possessed, and after they leave the person's body, the person will be like an empty case, because his soul is metaphorically gone. One shares that it is not the first time he has encountered a ghost. That's why he immediately killed the agent. If they do not kill the possessed human, the evil spirit will continue possessing many people. After a tiring day at work, the duo goes to a bar owned by Wang's ex-wife, where Lee notices the tension between Wang and his ex-wife. After that, Wang dances with his ex-wife. He spends his night promising that after his last day of work, he wants to renew their relationship, and this time he will give his all and not fail her. At that same time, another teenage girl commits suicide by drowning herself in the fish tank. Before she drops to the floor, the girl calls her roommate, who immediately goes to her side. As her friend panics, the girl suddenly opens her eyes and touches her friend, passing the possession to her. Later that night, Lee gets a nightmare that his wife has gone insane, and she makes him a soup with her blood, and their unborn child is meat. The following day, when the nurse calls Lee for his turn, he lets the injured construction worker be taken first. However, the nurse informs him that there's no one, and Lee realizes that he is a ghost. The worker vanishes, so Lee dismisses it and goes to the doctor's office for his turn. After the nurse removes his cast, the three are shocked to find that his arm has been carved. It has the Roman numeral for two, and a series of numbers and letters underneath it. The doctor soon finds out the cast for Lee was done by a nurse, so the doctor instructs the employee to call the said nurse. But it turns out she hasn't been at work for two weeks, so Lee takes things into his hands and asks his colleague to investigate the numbers carved on his hormone let-go arm. 
Meanwhile, a drunken Wung is on the building rooftop, where the first teenage girl hanged herself. She is a 16-year-old high school student, and her body has been out in the sun for days, causing some parts of it to melt. Wung thinks that it's a suicide, but the detective in charge disagrees with him, and insists it is a murder case. The two get into a heated argument as the detective belittles Wung, but he leaves before it escalates. The following day, the two officers go to the nurse's family house, where her father insists that his daughter has not been home for weeks. The father blames his wife for allowing their daughter to be a nurse, and the wife silently takes the blame. Just as they leave, Lee shows Wung his card arm, and informs him that the nurse was the one who did his cast. Shortly after their conversation, the nurse's mother comes to them in frantic. She takes them to the pig bin, showing the chained and disoriented nurse. The mother informs them that they found her in their house last week and wanted to bring a doctor to see her. However, the father didn't allow it, because he didn't want other people to know she was possessed. The mother desperately asks for their help to save her daughter, which they gladly do. After that, they return to the headquarters, where they discover that the girl was vaccinated by the same nurse before she hanged herself. Most of the victims possessed are females. One changes the subject and informs Lee that tomorrow is his last day at work. The colleague cuts in and tells them about another case, the adolescent girl who drowned herself. They check it out, and discover that the first girl and the second girl who committed suicide were friends. One thinks it is the same bad spirit that possessed them, but there's no evidence to support his hypothesis. Lee calls the recently registered number on the victim's phone, her roommate. It turns out, the roommate has gone to the police and is being interviewed by a policewoman. Lee asks where they are, and she tells him that they are at a school, particularly where his wife teaches. Lee immediately drops the call and informs him that the evil spirit is now in his wife's school. They hurriedly drive there, only to find a teacher's corpse in a classroom, while a possessed student repeatedly stabs herself with a protractor pencil. The student stabs herself in the neck before passing on the floor, touching a classmate. Everyone is in panic and fear, as Lee tries to find out which one of them is the possessed one. Just then, one comes in, and as he does so, a student runs out of the room, so Lee chases her outside. Wang stays behind to check on the wounded student, but his work gets interrupted when the delivery enters. She tells him that she studies there, but as they converse, the wounded student comes back to life, still possessed. The delivery girl sees this, so she quickly shoves Wang to the side, unintentionally touching the student and getting herself possessed. Wang lets out a heavy sigh, before reluctantly aiming his gun at her. However, Lee shoots her first through the window, but the bullet doesn't hit her, so she runs away from them. The two find her on the rooftop along with other students. Their hands are intertwined, and their pigtails are tied to each other. The delivery girl looks at them, and smirks before jumping out of the building, dragging five innocent students to death. However, the policewoman checks the grotesque scene in front of her eyes, and gets possessed. She takes out her gun, kills her colleague, and drives away, while the two reach the ground and find the bodies. Later that night, Lee witnesses the possessed policewoman shoot a pregnant woman in the head. The policewoman vanishes, so Lee hurriedly runs to the poor victim. Lee's phone suddenly rings, and at that same time, the policewoman reappears behind his back, pointing a gun at his head. She instructs him to answer, which he does. The caller is Lee's colleague, who informs Lee that the number carved on his arm is the ticket number that he gave to the dead driver, Chan. Just then, the policewoman in Chan's voice confesses everything to Lee. It reveals that Chan was the one who possessed the nurse and the others. Instead of killing Lee in the hospital, Chan took his time to fool around as a vengeful serial killer ghost. Chan confesses that teenage schoolgirls aren't his victims, because they are deceitful and full of lies for him. Chan taunts him that he will not possess and kill him right away, he will have his fun first. Lee bravely takes his chance and gets into a struggle with Chan. However, two police commissioners stop him, not believing his words that he's a policeman. In the policewoman's body, Chan walks away like nothing happened, while Lee proves that he's a policeman by citing the police manual rules. The commissioners finally believe him. After that, Lee calls one, informing him about the truth before rushing to his house. He checks the home, ignoring his wife's question. Fed up, the wife bursts out, telling Lee that she feels alone even though he's back, because he never had a time for her. The following day, Lee and one go to an abandoned establishment to meet Chan. On the way, Wan gives him Chan's file, containing all the atrocious acts he committed. Chan disguised as a tuition teacher to lure his victims and rape them before killing them. They sit by the entrance, and Wan tells Lee that they will shoot no matter who comes in. Truth be told, someone enters the building, but it is Wan's ex-wife. Lee cocks his gun and aims it at her, so Wan immediately blocks it with his body. He repeatedly instructs Lee to put down the weapon, but Lee doesn't listen since Wan made the rule. So Wang asks for three minutes to prove that his ex-wife is not possessed. He plays ballroom music and dances with his wife, proving that she is normal. 
However, when she hugs one, he becomes possessed, so Lee has no choice but to shoot him in the head. Lee reports what had happened to his superior, who advises him to keep things a secret for his sake. The superior reminds him of rule number one, before congratulating him as the new head of MAD. Lee returns home after an exhausting day at work, and engages in a romantic moment with his wife. As they do so, a flashback play is revealing that Lee finds the policewoman's body in his bathtub after coming home. Lee's wife, possessed by Chan, suddenly appears behind his back and passes the possession onto him. The scene reveals that Lee has been possessed a day before he went to the abandoned building with Wund. He kills all his colleagues, and the scenario that played a while ago was his story to deceive the authorities. The film ends with Lee on a cruise ship eyeing his next victim, Wung's ex-wife. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.